Hey everybody, it's me, and I'm here to talk to you about the Oscars. The Oscars are always a fun time of the year to root for your favorite team and question the terrible decision made by the Academy. Ever since I started this channel, I've been watching a lot of old, obscure cinema, so this has been a good reason to go back and watch some more contemporary stuff. I should also mention that maybe, possibly, I will be streaming my reaction to the event. Let's hope I can figure all of that out by Sunday. With all that said, here are the nominees. Dang, what a great way to start this video. Okay, so Promising Young Woman is a kind of revenge film directed by Emerald Fennell and starring Carrie Mulligan. This film wasn't great, but true to its name, it is promising. First off, the opening is just bad, and I'm mostly emphasizing the dialogue here. It's so heavy-handed, unnatural, and poorly delivered that honestly I thought it was trying to be ironic. I'm not exaggerating, it really felt like it was a college humor sketch. And this continues throughout the first act, especially with the love interest. The romance subplot hits every single beat you think it's gonna hit. The cinematography is also okay, there are moments with good framing and composition, for the most part, it's just shot, reverse shot, and medium shots. Exciting. And the music. God damn the music. There are scenes that work so well, and then they ruin it by playing generic, ominous music. Ooh, isn't this scene so tense? Yes, it was before we started playing royalty-free stock music. That said, this film really picks up in the third act. There's some great moments of revelation that play into the themes of the film. The dialogue, while well, still heavy-handed, was at least delivered well. And there are some cool shots here and there. I'll also applaud it for having an unconventional ending. Overall, it's okay, but that final act really has some good payoff. However, I don't want to sit through those first two acts ever again. Also, I just want to mention the use of the song Liebestod from Tristan and Isolde by Richard Wagner, which was also used in Unchan on the Lou. Just kind of sat there thinking, damn, I could be watching a better movie right now. Also, I made a video on that, which you should check out, just saying. As for this film, I'm giving it a 5 out of 10. Alright, hear me out. It's only a coincidence that my least favorite nominated films are the ones directed by women. I'm sorry, that's just how things lined up. Nomadland is a drama film directed by Chloe Zhao and starring Frances McDormand. I'm gonna start with the things I like. This film is kind of beautiful. There are so many great establishing shots. They all perfectly set up the tone of the film. The camera work is also very patient and just allows the scene to breathe, if that makes any sense. Frances McDormand also does a great job in this role. She pulls off the mannerisms and the look of this character very well. That said, I just don't feel like this film goes anywhere. Which is strange to say because it obviously does. Her character goes through so many new experiences and learns so much throughout the film. Yet I struggle to think of a scene that really left an impression on me. It feels like this film kind of meanders around different ideas and themes, but never really focuses on one thing. Still, it's a fine film both narratively and cinematically, and I look forward to what Zhao has planned next. I'm gonna give this a 5 out of 10. I'll admit I really liked this film after watching it, and then a day passed, and I realized I forgot almost everything about it. The Trial of Chicago 7 is written and directed by Aaron Sorkin. Now apparently he's a great writer, but the only thing I've seen by him is The Social Network, which I liked, but not my favorite of Fincher's films. In a similar vein, Chicago 7 is a fine film, but it's not really memorable for me. In fact, I'd honestly call it kind of cheesy in some ways. You got plenty of those crowd-pleasing one-liners. You are the first to suggest that I have discriminated against a black man. Then let the record show that I'm the second. And I'll admit, I smiled when they happened, but it also feels kind of cheap. You know, I've never seen Sasha Baron Cohen do anything besides funny accent comedies. I mean, I like those, but it was definitely interesting to see him play a more realistic character. 
He's still a comedian here, but there's also a serious side to him, which was done pretty well. Also, there's been some criticism that the film doesn't use its only blank character, and instead focuses on the group of Vietnam War protesters. I can see where the complaint comes from, but the film is going off what historically happened. He played a significant role, but you can't really rewrite history to give him an even bigger one. The film is called The Trial of Chicago 7, and thus it's going to focus on those seven, and what this trial was really about, which was Vietnam War protests. Ultimately, I think it's an enjoyable film, although I'd probably never watch it again unless I give my parents a crash course on some US history. It is a standard Oscar biopic. Nothing more, nothing less. I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. Mank is David Fincher's new film, documenting the work Herman Mankiewicz did for Citizen Kane. I'm honestly not too crazy about Citizen Kane, so it only seems fitting that Mank is also just fine for me. Keep in mind, I'm a huge Fincher fan. Zodiac is one of my favorite films of all time. Still, there's definitely a lot to appreciate here. I think my favorite aspect comes not even from the Hertz Mankiewicz drama, but from the side plot about Upton Sinclair and the impact of US propaganda films. It's a small segment, but also really interesting. The film is a great companion piece to Citizen Kane. It structures itself in a very similar way to that film, and even documents the work of old Hollywood very well. The performances are also top notch. Gary Oldman played Manx so well that I didn't even know it was him until the credits rolled. Also of note, Tom Burke did a great job as Orson Welles. You don't see too much of him, but damn does he shine on screen when he's there. Unfortunately, I just never got invested into the main plot. I followed along, but nothing really left an impression on me. Honestly, it might just be the flashback structure of the film, as I felt the same way about Citizen Kane. Again, there's a lot to like, and it's a fine film, but personally, I think it's Fincher's weakest. Anyway, I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. Judas and the Black Messiah is a biopic about the betrayal of Black Panther chairman Fred Hampton by undercover FBI informant William O'Neill, directed by Shaka King. This film is great, but suffers from one crucial problem. First, the story that unfolds in this film is super engaging and exciting. The cinematography helps establish the tones of each scene and heightens the tension you feel in them. More importantly though is the acting. Lakeith Stanfield and Daniel Kaluuya both give some of the best performances of their career. The only complaint I really have about them is Fred Hampton is supposed to be 20 years old, and Kaluuya does not look anything near that age. Actually, on that topic, after having seen the film, I saw some criticism over how Hampton was portrayed. I did a little research on my own to find out something rather interesting. Sporadically, Hampton mentioned the ideas of socialism in the film, but it never came across as too important. As it turns out, the real-life Hampton's ideology focused heavily on the ideas of socialism, but you would never know that if you only watched the film. Considering that this film is distributed by big corporate studios like Warner Brothers, you can kind of see why that is. They didn't just take liberties with the source material, they outright omitted a big part about him. Regardless of political or economic beliefs, that just seems shady. At best, it just reminds me that this is less of a passion project and more of an Oscar biopic. I don't think the movie is terrible because of this, but it does leave a sour taste in my mouth. Anyway, I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. Minari is a family drama directed by Lee Isaac Chung. It follows the Yi family as the father, Jacob Yi, tries to maintain a farm. I really like this film. It's a nice blend of fun charm while also dealing with serious issues within the family and the time period. This could have very easily been a basic cliche story about immigrants slash minorities overcoming adversity, but it chooses to portray the story in a very realistic way, and it's more interesting because of it. The story balances tones of happiness and sorrow, feelings of unity and isolation, and it's very impressive. Just as impressive is the acting, especially the young kids who actually did a good job here. I think my only real complaint had to do with the last act. I felt like it dragged a little too long near the end, and I wasn't really satisfied with how some things were resolved. It's still a great film that I feel like I might enjoy on a second viewing, but for now I'll give it a 7 out of 10.
Sound of Metal is directed by Darius Martyr and stars Riz Ahmed. This film was actually quite impressive. It takes this rather unique premise for a film and presents it in a very earnest and compassionate way. Riz Ahmed does a fantastic job portraying a man going through such a devastating change in his life. True to its name, sound plays a huge role in this film. It knows exactly when to emphasize certain sounds, music, noise, and even silence. And it does so with so much purpose for the scenes. Very rarely do we get a movie that tackles the issues of disabled people with such sincerity. And if they do get made, they very rarely get recognition. I mean, just this year we got fucking music by Sia. A movie that did not give a shit about their subject matter. So needless to say, I'm glad this film exists, I'm glad it's nominated, and I'm glad there's clear passion behind it. I'm gonna give this an 8 out of 10. The Father is a directorial debut of Florian Zeller. Just looking at this poster, I expected The Father to be some Oscar bait family drama film, and I was not looking forward to watching it. But boy was I wrong. Honestly, I think that's the best way of watching this film. Go into it without knowing what it's about. I'll say briefly though that Anthony Hopkins gives an amazing performance, especially near the end, and the editing is slick as fuck. I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. So I think The Father and Sound of Metal are the best choice. Minari is also a great choice, and I wouldn't be too upset if Judas and the Black Messiah won. The other films are fine, but if Promising Young Woman wins, I might be a little upset. So I didn't watch the other category since this is the first time I'm doing a video like this. Didn't want to commit a huge amount of time to it. But I did see some of the animated nominees. Some. Looking at this list, we can come to one conclusion. It's between these two. I haven't heard great things about Onward or the other one. And just looking at the trailers, I probably wouldn't like them. So it's just these two really. I think Soul is a great film, everyone loves that barbershop scene, and so do I. I just kind of wish it was more of it. Also the whole turning a minority character into a different creature slash animal is kind of weird. Weird in that it always happens to them, but whatever. It's good. I enjoyed it. And I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. As for Wolfwalkers, I really like this film. Listen, we gotta bring 2D animation back, I miss it. Just as much as I miss the sprite animation from Pokemon. I can't be the only one who thinks the series got worse after going 3D. Wolfwalkers is a fun friend adventure film that actually takes itself seriously in some aspects. I was fully engaged with everything. The imagery, the framing, the colors, they're all fucking great. A film about women supporting women. You'd love to see it. I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. However, I'd be lying if I didn't want Farmageddon to win. I haven't seen it, but the same people behind Wallace and Gromit are behind it, so I already love it. <laughs> anyway, that's all I got for now. I'll try to watch more movies before the possible stream. Again, I gotta figure all that out. So uh, hopefully, I'll see you soon.